Okay, so I'm doing these little 25mm spacers. They've already been threaded on the one end M6. This end is uh, going to be machined the next. So, I'm going to pop that in. The first thing is a facing off operation, just to remove that little tit from the parting operation of the previous job. Then a little bit of a deburr on the edge, just to take those nasty sharp edges off <coughs> when they've been handled. And we've got a little centre drill. I generally go right down to the shoulder on the drill, just gives it a good leading edge. And we've got a 5.2 drill, which goes in two handle revolutions on my tail stock, which is about 20mm. Uh, I'm not generally knock the speed down to about 750 RPM, knock it into reverse straight away, pop in the tap, so the thread had just disappeared, bang it straight into reverse, and out it comes. And that's the operation, which I've done reasonably slowly. Typically what I'll do as well on the uh, on the drill and on the tap is for every five uh, spaces. So I'll just give it a little bit of a squirt with uh, my brake free, which is an extreme pressure lubricant, perfect for drilling and tapping. If you haven't used that stuff in the past, I strongly suggest you go out and buy a can. This you can get it from a company called Silmid.com, S-I-L-M-I-D. Uh, it goes for roughly about nine quid a can. Last stages, obviously, depending on what you're doing. Now I've, I'm doing an absolute shed load of um, uh, uh, drilling and tapping operations at the moment. Um, I can generally get away actually with threading the other end dry um, with my solid, uh, my solid die. Um, I was using a split die initially and I was getting all sorts of issues with this particular thread being um, oh sorry the, uh, the the minor diameter was was oversized so consequently when it was being screwed into the other mating half um, it was jamming it wasn't uh, wasn't working so let's say we've got a new fresh piece in and on we go this is the slowest part bringing the, the tool in just to get that that little tit off because such a long travel on the cross slide to make sure I've got clearance for my quad head. Now this is a, a cheap thing from our DG tools and um, you can get these off eBay for about 80 quid. Um, let's knock this off a second. This is a particular custom uh, head in so much that I've got three three chucks. Now ordinarily the, the offering you've got on, uh, on eBay uh, you'll have two chucks, you'll have, if I spin this around, you'll have your you, you can have your die holder and then typically you'll have a live centre on, on the fourth position. Um, obviously my, my operation for, for this particular uh, project I'm working on at the moment, um, I have absolutely no need whatsoever for a, for a live centre. And so I, uh, I, I gave the guys at RGG a call and said, look, <laughs> I want a quad head but I don't want a, a, a tail stair, I don't want a live centre. I said, no worries. We, we can swap it for a third chuck, which is basically what I've got here. So I've got my, my centre, my drill, and, uh, and my tap. Um, this is a, a red red ring um, high-speed spiral tap, which is typically used for, for steels as opposed to aluminiums. I did have a yellow ring, um, which is more ideally suited, apparently, for, um, for, for doing aluminiums. And the problem I found with this, um, occasionally the, the threads on the reverse cycle, when I'm ejecting the tap from the, the aluminium, it would just pick up on the edges, um, on the leading edge, uh, it would pick up a, a chunk of aluminium and consequently it would score all the thread coming back out. So um, I've had excellent results so far with the red ring, so this is my uh, my reserve so to speak. You can probably just about make out, I've ground the, the tip off this as well just to give me a bit more of a, a blind hole uh, depth clearance. Um, unfortunately, I haven't done the same job on this, on the red ring yet, um, I guess. <laughs> As and when I find time, I will uh, I will get round to doing that. But, uh, I've got a uh, thousand of these bad boys to make and three thousand two, sorry, eight hundred of these bad boys to make and uh, three thousand two hundred of these. Now this is a fully completed part, so we've got the 10mm M6 thread that end. M6, this end which has been drilled and tapped, so at least 10mm of it is uh, um, is threaded and these to go go together sweet as a nut. There's you know the, the thread that's been formed inside these 
um, aluminium parts is, uh, is very good and as you can probably tell from this there's all sorts of marks off, uh, off the jaws of my, my chuck um, so as I've mentioned in one of my previous videos um, typically I stick these in tumbler with ceramic shapes and burnishing soap uh, I probably probably put about maybe 30 parts in my, my one and a half pound tank uh, I'm not sure how much ceramic I've got but it's yeah, it's a fair bit I suppose it's probably about quarter full with the ceramic pop these on top teaspoon of burnishing soap and I fill the tank about three quarters full of water and let them tumble for probably the better part of an hour um, I get some good music blaring over the top because the the sort of washing noise of the of the tank can get very 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 irritating so um, that's basically my operation that's what I do I'm so I'm facing, give it a quick deburr, just to knock these edges off uh, from the previous parting operation. Center tap, center drill, uh, 5.2 M6 tap, and while I'm back up to back up to speed, I can do all this operation in roughly 30 to 35 seconds. Um, and as I said, with the quantities I'm making, every single second per cycle counts. So um, there we go.